So not exactly. There are certain predictive factors in terms of success. So we know that the extent of disease is a predictive factor in terms of resolution. In other words, the greater extent of disease, the less chance of getting complete resolution of disease. On the other hand, the symptom improvement is best in patients with severe disease. So you, you, it depends what you're looking at. We like to think of it in terms of resolution or uh, of disease or complete control of the disease, and that's better uh, in, in the less severe. Smoking is definitely um, adversely affects outcome following surgery. Um, some recent studies that we've been doing at our institution on the bitter taste receptors show that the presence or absence of bitter taste receptors, whether you're a super taster or a non taster, is actually predictive of outcome of sinus surgery as well. So that's a fairly new one, but there are a lot of other things I think that, that play a part in this environment, pollution, so on and so forth. There are ways, there are ways to predict sinus surgery, but it's a compelling approach of the patient. It's a total approach and we have to manage a framework. So at this moment, we have very simple clues, which in my opinion are underestimated and not practically done, is the collection of secretions. The collection of secretions mean that mucosinusal secretions have to be collected, not always sent to bacteriology or virology, but they should be sent to pathology to see what is the cellular content of it. And to my opinion, with recent work which has been published, I could show that the presence of eosinophil mucin, this is a speci specific uh, pathological image where you have necrotic eosinophils, where you have chocolate and crystals, but the characteristics of those secretions can predict the outcome. Meaning that if you find patients with that kind of tough secretions, in my study, on the long term, in patients with nasal polyposis, you might have recurrent disease in 50% of your patients and even going up to 70%. And by collecting secretions, looking for eosinophil cells, you have a very simple way to predict in a certain patient within a week, if you have information, to tell your patients the outcome might be bad over three to five years. I think that's interesting. Though the EPOS guidelines up to now, they mention recurrent pathology in nasal polyposis between 6 and 60%, which means everything, which means nothing. So I think that uh, the urge is uh, to be pushed forward and there's a need to collect secretions to determine what kind of pathology and what kind of mucociliar war the nasal mucosa and sinuses are doing day by day.